Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, the podcast for all things Mecha. Jump ship incoming. Welcome to Mobile Armor Radio, number eight. It's January 2019. We made it to 2019, people. Woo! Yay! We made it! Actually, it's February, isn't it? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Time is hard. We made it to, through the first month the of first yeah, month. 2019. <laughs> Yay! That's what really matters. If I cared, I'd restart this, but I don't. So we're just going to go with it. <laughs> This is the jump ship. This is the intro. That's all the comedy you're getting this episode right there. And, uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, time again to do a mobile armor radio. Let's hope we have things to talk about and have some fun. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, right? Yep. Want to jump into the drop ship? Yeah, we always have stuff to talk about. <laughs> we'll go see what we're working on in the drop ship then. Fine. Drop ship. <laughs> you gonna do a rap version now? Did the drop ship? Did you mind? Drop ship. <laughs> drop ship. <laughs> drop ship landing. Drop ship. Yeah. Drop ship. Drop ship. Drop ship. Okay. <laughs> That it's this is going to be all episode, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's all yeah. it's going to be. Beatboxing and battle body. I think we're all we're gone all stir crazy. It's winter. I was all I was I was a little bit EDM there myself. Yeah, <laughs> you, you need some glow sticks. Yeah, <laughs> a little pacifier, <laughs> some uh, Molly. Molly. <laughs> so this is a drop ship. Enough about <laughs> drugs in your EDM. <laughs> I don't think we introduced ourselves in the intro. No, no, we well. no, introduced ourselves in the dropship. It's it, this one's falling apart already. It's it's when I'm in control, nothing's going right here. I'm Rob. We're, we're, it's it's. I'm Brian, <laughs> and I'm Chopper. Uh, 2019's been a little tumultuous due to weather. Yeah, we, we've got all, got we're got all clear going, for some chops on that dropship. This is what ca- this is how cabin fever starts. That's right. This is cabin fever. Yeah. <laughs> So the dropships, what we're working on? Well, let's start with Brian. Brian, what you working on? Anything? Anything exciting? Um. Well, I, I've had uh, a few uh, kind of updates to uh, to a few of my ongoing projects, uh, small incremental ones, uh, for sure. But uh, I think uh, for for the uh, Dead Zone Grin Logon Mech mm. that I've uh, been working on, I think I found a way to do it a hundred percent. Mantic, nice. Uh, including having uh, translucent sunglasses, uh, and and the trick is to use those plastic cases that the minis come in, <laughs> <laughs> make them black with a sharpie. <laughs> so uh, I've I've made progress on that. I've I've chopped up some of the pieces. Um, I, I've determined that I want to uh, combine basically some of the parts of a strider with it, uh, specifically like the arms. It's going to give me a lot more flexibility than it, uh, than it was previously just trying to do it with the, the iron ancestor arms. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, that's shaping up in, in some fun ways. Uh, still might be a while before that's actually done though. Um, then on the, my little fantasy, uh, Escaflone mech, uh, project that I got going on, uh, I had the the realization that the the parts that I had gotten previously, which I believe were an elder wraith lord, um, was not going to give me the height. Yeah, that 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 makes it comparable to the the giant figure, uh, which is what I, I was going to be bringing him into the fray for. Uh, so I I upped the game and I found on eBay someone was just selling the legs of the wraith knight. Uh, so similar, similar mech, uh, but it, it stands, I think, 20 inches tall itself. Uh, so, so, uh, these legs are, are definitely gonna give me that height that I was looking for. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a monster. Uh, but it's also gonna be pretty awesome. So, 
looking forward to to continuing working on that again and other projects that that's kind of incremental um i did also pick up uh, on new projects that i have no idea when i'm going to get to it um i was back in uh wisconsin and illinois around the holiday season and i i picked up uh one of my favorite uh, mechs from uh, Gundam, specifically UC Gundam, is the Stark Jagan. I just that's the the uh, Jagan. If you might remember seeing it at the beginning of the Unicorn show, it's uh, it's one of the Jagans that gets in the fight with the Kshatriya right in the beginning. Uh, it's the one with the big missile packs on its shoulders. Nice. Yeah, almost looks like a. Oh, I can't even think what it looks like. <laughs> it looks awesome, <laughs> and, it does, and it's it's one of my favorite, uh, you know, grunts that has aspirations of being a hero mech. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I I got myself a high grade kit of that. Nice, but uh, that's that's kind of modeling projects right now. I got plenty of other stuff going on, but that's uh, for another game that's not about mecha. <laughs> so pat you got anything going on uh yeah actually you know uh so with the advent update of the cav kickstarter uh some of those uh pictures of those models and everything it's kind of spurred me on to kind of start finishing up my my rack force mm. uh, so i've been working on that getting all, all the highlights done and everything and i'm going to start moving on into the Calling of the weapons and then painting on the logos after that. As far as with the mechs concerned, uh, uh, I've made a bold move and I moved all my mech models down into the Dragon Horde basement. <laughs> <laughs> so now they're all there so I can stare at them and, and, and really get to work on them soon. Uh, pretty much, I think after Adepticon is when I'm going to start working on some more models again, in, in all honesty. Uh, <laughs> with the C2E2 and Adepticon so close together, I, I don't have a lot of time. Uh, so it, even with my cab, it's in between stuff that I'm doing when I need it to to wet the or dilute the creative palette, so to say, you know. Yeah, to get to mm. so you're not just working on the same thing over and over again. Yeah, so to, when I start to, to get a little stir crazy with yeah. the cleansing, yes, with the foreground and all the other models that I've been working on, uh, kind of. It's nice to take a small break and get to my little cab and finish up those models because uh, I definitely want to get back into playing cab again uh, fairly soon, you know, because I got a couple of guys that I play with, and uh, one of the guys has also been very busy, uh, so we just haven't had enough time to get together and play. So, you know, adulting kind of sucks, but, you know, you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, your adulting is uh, building foreground models for uh, Adepticon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those models are hard. They are hard. Actually, I have a, uh, I won a mech hanger from uh, foreground. It's it's huge. Oh man! Nice. I won that a Beast of War. Yeah, it's. it's yeah. Nice. I would never buy it, but it was hell to put together. But it's very nice now. It's put together. You could you could pretty much play a whole game of Dead Zone on it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, working on the cab again. Uh, I think I might delve into the the mechs that we picked up at Gen Con. Finally, <laughs> with, with the with the release of the new beginner set, so mm-hmm. I kind of want to get a jump on that. And I, this time, I want to paint my mechs the the correct color. Correct color. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because you thought you were doing a a a. a I was doing the Lear and Commonwealth. And you end up doing a Davian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At some point they were merged, so it's all good. Yeah, it's true. So instead of instead of blue, they were, they were green, green and white. There you go. Is that about it? That's about it. I've been working on tons of stuff, so it's gonna be a long list here, people. <laughs> uh, first thing I, I once again Gundam loot. I get it every month. <laughs> It sounded like you said that I got my gun damn loot. <laughs> my gun damn loot. <laughs> got my gun damn loot. I uh, I did, and uh, this month mu- this month was actually really good. I got two two uh, kits. Usually it's a kit and like a Haru or one of those guys. Something or something terrible. Dumb chibi. And this one was a uh, the uh, 
uh, Gundam uh, Dynames from uh, Gundam Double Zero, and it's it's a all right kit. It's it's green and white. It's a nice color scheme, but it's uh it's pretty much just a uh, you know standard. Looks like all mm-hmm. the other ones. It's got more wings and like a shield kind of configuration, which is kind of cool. But uh, the really cool one, well, I got a Ligao from uh, Gundam Seed. It's like a, almost like a Zord from. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I really like that kit because it was interesting. There was there's actually a uh, like a wire inside to make his neck so you can bend it around and stuff. It was a, it was a different kit, and it's neat to build something that's not just a uh, bipedal Gundam. This is a. On, it's on, like an animal. Looks kind of like a. I guess it looks like a lion, kind of. And uh, yeah, he was pretty fun. I guess he's a uh, he's a griffin because he's got wings. But uh, so that was fun, kit. It was nice to get something different. Uh, also for Christmas, I had a lot of money, so I uh, I went to a Big Bad Toy Store and bought a bunch of stuff. Unfortunately, <laughs> I got cr- tons of duty because I live in Canada. But, oh. But I got uh, Power of the Primes, uh, Optimus Prime, and Erotimus Prime. They came in a, a uh, set from them, and nice. they're cool. They're uh, they got both versions, the Prime and non Prime version. So you get Hot Rod and you get Rodimus plus Optimus. And I forget what Optimus is non Prime name. It's something weird. Uh, Paxton. Yeah, something. Yeah, something like <laughs> it's, that. It's uh, Orion. Orion Pax. Pax. George. Yeah, it's it's like Pax. Yeah. <laughs> it's Herbert. Herbert Smite. <laughs> but they're inside the uh, Herbert Prime. The, the, the prime version, the little guys are actually inside of it as part of it. It's, it's kind of weird, but they're nice size. They're really large. So I like them. They look good. The, uh, the Optimus looks good in robot form. I left, uh, Rodimus in car form because I don't really care about Rodimus Prime, but. Yeah. <laughs> who, who does really? Yeah. He's oh, cool as a car though. He's a cool car. <laughs> and, uh, I did get a bunch of, uh, Pacific Rim Uprising figures too, the Diamond Select ones. I got Gypsy Avenger, Saber Athena, and Bracer Phoenix. So those nice. are figs, not models? Yeah, they're figs, yeah. And they're, uh, large size. They're, they're bigger, uh, they're bigger than, like, uh, Marvel Legends. They're, like, I don't know, maybe 10 inches tall. But they're, like, uh, I thought they'd be more poseable. They're, they're almost, like, rubbery, kind of. And, uh, mm. it's hard to get them to stand upright and, not as impressed with those, but I, I'd say Bracer Phoenix. He's cool. He's nice and solid looking, but the, and Gypsy Avengers fine. Saber Athena was the one it, I had to like glue her sword on because it, she, her hand doesn't clasp it. Like there's, she can't hold her sword otherwise. It's really, really huh. yeah, strange things like that. But, uh, so I wasn't so, they're cool, but they're, I wasn't so happy with those. But then I also got a Robotech 1100 Veritech from T- Toynami or Toynami and, uh, it's uh, it's transformable. He's cool. He's smaller than I expected, but he's really cool, detailed. And I left him in uh, in um, uh, Gerwak form, the middle version. <laughs> yeah, because I I uh, like that version. Although I already have a I have a model of a normal one, and I have a model of a a, a, a Gerwak one. So maybe I'll might turn him into plain eventually. So I have all three versions. But mm, right mm. now he's just like that, and he's really cool. Uh. That's is it. For... He Skull Squadron? Yeah, yeah, he's a Roy Fokker. <laughs> yeah. You have to get a Roy nice. Fokker. I, he's my favorite pilot by far. Gerwalk. Gerwalk. <laughs> and, uh, then modeling wise, we have to do, we had to finish all the striders for Mech Zone at Adepticon. Me and my friend Jack are running it. And we both did a bunch of, uh, of, uh, mechs for that. Mm. He did, uh, we both did four, but, uh, well, actually we had two already done, so we did three each. I did a Forge Father Brocker Iron Ancestor. So the Iron Ancestors are a little stubbier than the, uh, the, uh, the, um, Striders. Strider? Yeah. But, yeah. I, and I hate the arms that usually come on an Iron Ancestor, so I chopped them off and I gave them flails. So both of his arms are <laughs> flails. And, uh, then I made a, uh, GCPS, uh, I, uh Strider. And that's the, the corporations. And he's got a big shield, and I gave him uh, the uh, gun, so he's holding he's holding the gun behind the shield, and I I sculpted him so he's down on one knee, so he's kind of oh, like nice. hiding behind the shield. That's awesome. And then my last one, because I was insane, and I think once again I think I sniffed too much uh, air, <laughs> air, air, airbrush uh, paint. I uh, made a Reb Strider, and the pilot's a, a female Go Sorak. Right. <laughs> the pilot's a female Sorak, and uh, she is a. Uh, a like of purple and, and uh, uh, pink, obviously, because uh, her Mexican name is Stabigail, and it's just a uh, strider standing up, <laughs> arm above her head with a big spear, and she's purple and pink. Everything is uh, 
I just cannot wait to see this thing. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a Rebs player, for those that don't know. So everything Rebs is great. Yeah. You posted that picture on Facebook, didn't you? I think somewhere. I don't know if I put it in the uh, mech, uh, the mobile arm radio. I don't know if I've seen that one. Yeah, put it in the mobile arm radio. Yeah. It's, it's actually it turned out really nice. Yeah, she and she's very tall because when you put put that spear up, it's it, the spear is meant to be like down by your side with a shield. I put it way above her head. She's she, it it makes that model huge. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be able to shoot that model from anywhere oh, on yeah. the board. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, then also for Adepticon, we're doing the anime Strider battle, as Brian was saying. So I, I decided mm-hmm. to go something different. I made a uh, Ha two hundred six from Ghost in the Shell, so he's on four legs. Yeah. And it's about 90% Mantic. Uh, the gun and the top turret ball aren't Mantic, but everything else is Mantic. So it's, it's, needless to say, it doesn't look like a Strider anymore, but, uh, he turned out alright. <laughs> I like the way he turned out. But, yeah, that one looks sweet. So yeah, I've been doing a lot, but now I am, uh, I'm actually in between stuff. I have, I have some few things here and there, but I'm happy to get to the mech zone. Now we just have to write the rules and, uh, all the extra stuff for it, but. <laughs> 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 but it's all good. I think that covers what I've been working on. Anybody else have anything to add? No. I feel like really? you're the most busy of us all. Well, it, it's because <laughs> the Taskmaster, the Pharaoh, put me to work, right, Pat? Well, Pharaoh's putting everyone to work, including himself. Yeah. <laughs> Pyramids must be built. Yeah, Adepticon is the big uh, event for us in the year, so. Yeah. It's Adepticon. Well, one of them. Adepticon is the coming of Ra, and pyramids must be built. Yeah, that's the one coming up. So we had yeah, we we'll have a lot to do. We'll have one show uh, between now and then, and uh, I'm sure it'll just be panicked voices and <laughs> sounding exhausted. Pharaoh yeah. has Pharaoh has heard grumblings from some of the some of the <laughs> slaves <laughs> on on another channel. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that Pharaoh insisted on being called Pharaoh. Yes. <laughs> well, you did. That was the that's the scary part. That was Gen Con, though. That's Adepticon. I, usually, I don't, I get to enjoy Adepticon, but you put me to work. <laughs> not a lot. No, but in all honesty, not a lot. But if people are coming to Adepticon, all of us. Well, Pat won't be. Pat will be busy in the uh, booth, but the both me and Brian will be running games. So come and play with us. And if you're busy, yes. it's only because people want to play with you. And we told people don't sign up for the Friday mix zone because we want the day off. Just so, just sign up for the Saturday one. (laughs) (laughs) Sign up for all of them, or sign up for the Friday, but just come hang out and drink beers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if you don't want to play, come sign up for Friday. But then you have to pay. Just you can just come and play. I'm sure you'll find us. There's always a uh, room that all the uh, uh, the uh, Mantic stuff, the Mantic games. tournaments are in and we always just hang out there that's like our base of operations so if anybody is at adepticon and wants to come hang out with us uh, just look for the mantic room if you see guys playing kings of war or vanguard or dead zone mm-hmm. we'll we'll be somewhere near there look you for know, the guys pat? look for the guys playing with mechs yeah do you know pat is it the is in the same uh, spot that we were last year or do we not know that yet i don't know yet but i think okay. it, i'm not, like 90% sure that it's in the same room probably yeah. the same room i yeah. i cool yeah, I don't remember the name of that room, it's, but uh, it's, uh, it's the second floor at the far end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about it. But anyways, Tepticon's coming up, so that'll be fun. Another month, a month, two months, pretty much by the end of uh, this month. But uh, we'll see. It'll be a fun time. We'll be had by all, I'm sure. Oh yeah, as always. So we'll take a break. We'll come back with some Comstar. Aren't you going to wrap your way out of this one? <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't have a rap on that. Calm star. Calm star. Calm star. Hello, this is the calm star. <laughs> Message from calm star. Your, your calm mech star. is falling over. Do you require assistance? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, welcome. This is calm star. We're talking about TVs, movies, books, comics, RPGs, ro- video games. I almost said role-playing games. That was RPGs means, unless it's rocket propelled grenades, I guess. But uh, we could be talking about those. It could be (laughs) RPGs. I mean, there's MechWarrior still out there, and I think there's a new MechWarrior coming out in there. Uh, It's not called MechWarrior anymore. I think there is a new MechWarrior. Oh, MechWarrior. Oh, you mean uh, video game. No, the role-playing game. Role-playing game, it's not called MechWarrior anymore. It's called um, a game, or what's it called? Because they can't call it MechWarrior because of the video game. 
Oh, what? That's so stupid. Yeah, they own the whoever owns the rights to the video game made them so they can't call any of the books Mech Warrior anymore. It's called. Uh, I have it right here. I will be away from my. I'm up it's, right over here. I'm straight. It's up. called. <laughs> I drive big robots RPG. <laughs> and but the like Mech Warrior stuff is not like for the RPG. It would not be BattleTech, right? It would be something else. No, it's it was BattleTech. Would it be BattleTech? It was uh, the, BattleTech. The it RPG was Battle is Mech Warrior. Well, yeah, MechWarrior was the role-playing game, but now it's called a, uh... God damn it, I just looked it up. <laughs> oh, Battletech, <laughs> a, a Time of War, I think it's called. Yeah, they can't that, call it MechWarrior. Would... It's stupid. They should just call it MechWarrior, but hey, rules. Uh, well, this is Comstar. That was, that was <laughs> it. That was a long and uh, drawn-out uh, thing. Isn't the, uh... Maybe it's the Clicks game, too. They they own the name MechWarrior, too. The Clicks game is called MechWarrior. Might be hmm. something to do that too. They just they don't have the rights to call it anymore. Anyways, I have some of those yet. The clicks. What's up? Yeah, I, I actually have a hand. Yeah, I have about six hundred of them. <laughs> oh, the clicks. Uh, yeah, I lost my mind when it when yeah. I found out there was Mechware clicks. I, 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 yeah, the, the, I was of sane mind and didn't get into the clicks. Yeah, it's uh, it was a habit. They were just in boxes everywhere now because I have no way to display them. <laughs> I was thinking about chopping off the bases and uh, making them into normal mech warrior, but then I was like, that's a lot of work. <laughs> anyway, this has nothing to do... Well, I guess it does have someone to do with it. It is yeah. a game. But, it is a game. <laughs> uh, who wants to start? Let's go with Pat. Pat, have you been watching or playing or doing anything? No. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a bad person to start with. <laughs> All right, horrible, horrible, on. horrible. Um... <laughs> uh, Honestly, no. I mean, I, I've been uh, I've been kind of just checking out some of the newer cartoons. I, you know, I'm still watching. Uh, oh, Christ! What the hell is which gun? I'm, I'm still finishing up. Uh, Z- were you working on Zeta? Yet? Zeta, yeah. Mm. Almost. Um, I think I'm like three more episodes of being done with that. Nice. Uh, and then I, that cartoon that you showed, uh, I was very interested in that, Rob, that you posted on uh, the Facebook page. Oh, yeah, that's uh, coming out from uh, Rooster Teeth. Made- yeah, the one I made fun of, Rooster Teeth. <laughs> yeah, Rooster Teeth has been around for a long time. They did Red vs. Blue with a Halo. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they and, it uh, was like a comedy. Ru- yeah, and then Ruby is the newest one, which was good. And unfortunately, the uh, guy who created it died. So they kind of yeah, kind yeah. of fell off being great after that, but it's still yeah. okay. But this one looks really good. Yeah, it's a uh, mech, like, it's a cel-shaded, kind of like a really weird... Uh, animation, but it looks yeah, but it's it got cool. a lot of good actor voice voice yeah. actors. Yeah, a lot of famous people. Yeah, you got you mm-hmm. got Creed in there. Uh, who else, who else was in there? <laughs> Creed, Dakota Fanning <laughs> was in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was interesting. I don't know if it's just friends of theirs or they actually, you know, who knows how they got these people to actually do this, but. Yeah. yeah. So I've been I've been looking into that because I want to watch it. Yeah, it starts. Uh, it should be started by now. By the time this comes out. Nice. And, and then the the last thing mech related that I watched was I watched the MST <laughs> version of Atlantic Rim. Oh, you you did nice. watch it? <laughs> oh, it's the greatest. <laughs> it's the most greatest horrible movie ever, next to Gunhead. So you actually watched that movie twice once once by yourself <laughs> and then once yes. with commentary. Oh, the commentary makes it so much better. <laughs> oh yeah. So I should just skip to watching it by itself and just watch the commentary version? Oh, yeah. Watch the MS3 version. I, yeah. It'll be way more enjoyable because it's so bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I watched I watched that uh, around uh, Thanksgiving time. Yeah. Yeah. The Atlantic Rim is just such a bad movie. It's horrible. That's been mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. So. Uh, but that's all I have for, for K- K- Comstar. K- K- Comstar. K- 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 Comstar. Comstar. <laughs> I might as well go next. I, I uh, because of Brian, I watched uh, Gundress because he mentioned yeah, what'd it you last year. That I liked it a lot. It, I thought it was really good. It was uh, I liked the animation and I, the mechs were cool. They're more like powered armor suits, really. They're a little bit yeah. smaller than a regular mech, but yeah, I thought it was fun. Yeah, it reminded me of um, it reminded me of something else. Well, kind of like it reminded me of Appleseed? Uh, yeah, Appleseed a little bit and um, a little bit Ghost in the Shell actually. This idea of like the the world hmm. seemed like Ghost in the Shell a bit. But, yeah, yeah it was, it was the same guy, I think, uh, Shiro Masamune. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun, yeah. It's just like an all-female mercenary team who 
get embroiled in uh, some hijinks with uh, other mechs and people stealing some political stuff. Political espionage. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, then there's, uh, of course, one of them knows the bad guy and used to date him, and there's always that in those shows. So, yeah, that made it awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but I like how it wasn't, it wasn't schmaltzy. It was like, yeah, mm. it was almost like a, I thought, I thought that relationship was a little bit truer. It was, seemed like it was a bad relationship. <laughs> like, it was, yeah. didn't work good together. <laughs> it was not a healthy one, for yeah. sure. Yeah. They, like, they were like robbing banks or something. I can't yeah. Remember. That's the one thing I found funny about that. It's like, yeah, you went from robbing banks, you get caught, and they just throw you in this group of mercenaries. Like you, she never went to jail. She just got enlisted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Part of your parole is you have to pilot this mech. Yeah, but it was fun. I liked it. I, I, I thought it was a good, solid show. Mm. It had some good action and uh, good set pieces. I thought it was good. Yeah. And I also finished the Jade Falcon BattleTech books. They weren't great. Uh, <laughs> They were fine, but it was just, uh, especially the middle one was the worst, I think, but it's, they're not great. I've moved on to a Wolf's Dragoon one, which is more fun, I think, a little bit. There's a lot of political intrigue in this that it's, uh, I don't, no, there hasn't been a mech, I'm halfway through the book, there hasn't been one mech battle. There's been some, like, fighting, but no, no mech battles, which is odd for a Battletech book. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, with the, uh, MechWare 5 is coming out in September of this year, and they had a pre-order, so I pre-ordered it, and with that pre-order I got a uh, lots of stuff for MechWare Online, and then MechWare Online's free to download, so I, I downloaded that and uh, started playing around with that. I've never gone online to fight anybody yet, and it's really hard to control, and I'm not used to it yet, so so far I've been just shooting dummies and uh, trying to learn to control a MechWare mech again, because it's, it's pretty similar to it used to be, but the, I think they use every single button on the keyboard does something <laughs> well you gotta get the you gotta get that controller that yeah. has all the other buttons on it too yeah oh yeah yeah i mean i hate to invest in another controller like that when no I was, when i was deep in the mech warrior yeah that's those back in the day. like those <laughs> flight sim uh controllers and stuff oh yeah, yeah it was horrible my I, I think i had like 32 buttons on my on just on the joystick itself yeah, yeah that's right what was what was that old old uh Older PC game that had the the full rig, like you needed that to play it. Was it Steel Broadside or something like that? What the heck was that? I don't know. Uh, the, oh, uh, Steel Battalion. So, yes. Yeah. Something like that. I think that might be it. Yeah, and you, yeah, you have like the whole s- huge thing that goes yeah, in front like, of you. Yeah. There, there was a literal process on like which switches you had to flip to start the thing up. Yeah, it's like a real. <laughs> you think MechWare yeah, Online's hard? That one's Steel crazy. Battalion. It had the. It had the whole control deck and yeah. two joysticks and the foot pedals. And then they went the opposite direction with the sequel that came out on the on the Xbox. Oh yeah, with the con- with the Connect. Oh no. And so all of the controls were like gesture based. Uh, and oh, it did horrible. not go well. <laughs> no, I'm sure those those hardcore people weren't into that. No. But yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah my MacWare rig did not look like this, but it was <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah, you can go extreme. These, well, that's why I, I don't, I'm, I'm just scared, scared to go online. Like, I never was going to play MechWare online, but since I got MechWare, F- MechWare 5 is a solo player, or you could play online. Like, so I think I can handle playing against AI. Maybe I could turn it way down so they're stupid and they don't just kill me instantly. But if I go online, <laughs> I know they're just going to headshot me right, right off the bat and I'll be dead. <laughs> oh, if, yeah. Eventually I'll try it, but uh, right now I'm just trying to learn the ropes of having to control a mech in uh, that kind of sim. It's fun though. I, I it is. It brings me way back to playing MechWarrior, like the original back in the day. Yeah, I'm debating on where they getting in. I mean, I don't have enough time as it is. Last thing I need is this thing to take over my life again. Yeah, MechWarrior Online's free though, so you can just go on Steam and download <laughs> it. But uh, you you have to pay and for extra whenever me- you want. <laughs> well, you have to. The, what the, it's microtransactions. They want you to pay for extra mechs or pay for paint jobs and stuff like that. So. I, uh, yeah, none of that really, I do have a lot of, like, free money that I got with that MechWare 5 pre-order. They give you, pretty much they give you as much as what you paid for the, uh, the game, MechWare 5, they gave you in money if, to use in MechWare Online. So I have, like, 50 bucks worth of credits or something, I don't know. I don't even know how to use it. I, I, I've, I've just scratched the surface of it, so it should be interesting. That's kind of a neat deal, though. Yeah. That they, that they would do that. Well, they called it their community, uh... Their community pre-order thing. I think it's still available. <laughs> they want the people playing MechWare Online to play MechWare Five. So yeah, 
And then once that, if it gets, cause it's one of those things with like AAA games now, if you get a big opening weekend, it gets a lot more word of mouth, the more people will start playing it, so. And it's mm-hmm. only been like 15 years since a MechWarrior game came out, other than the online version, so. Yeah. I, I think this is, I remember, I think it was 2014, I remember them saying, oh, MechWarrior 5 this year. It's like, eh, it's only five <laughs> years late. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for me, for uh, that kind of stuff. I don't know if there's anything else. Any TVs, movies, books? Anybody else getting anything? Brian, what have you been up to? Um, well, I, I've got a couple of things, actually. So uh, I think we posted that earlier today on uh, Mobile Armor Radio, but the uh, Battletech uh, beginner box yes. uh, and starter set uh, had just uh, been released, I think, today at the time of this recording. And uh, I just so happened to be picking up some paint at my, my local uh, model shop, and I found I found that they had a couple of copies, wow, so I nice. grabbed myself the beginner box. Nice. Um, so that one uh, it comes with two mechs in it, uh, and I'm bad and don't remember the names of them. Um, and then it has Pri- a couple probably like probably a locust. Uh, no, it's uh, a- no, no, it's not a locust. They they look like they're medium sized um, for the actual models. Let's see if I can. Uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't unpacked the whole thing yet, so it's like all still in shrink wrap. Um, but they do have like little cardboard uh, max as well to to just kind of have little cardboard stands. Oh, like how I first played BattleTech. <laughs> so it's it's um like the beginner box uh, is like just quick rules, but the thing like it was under twenty bucks. It was like nineteen dollars. Yeah, it oh, comes really? get this. Yeah, it's cheap, and it comes with three maps. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out which mechs were in it. And I think it's got the the uh the cards for the uh Alpha Strike too, not just the uh other one too, so you, you can use those mechs in both versions. Yeah, it's got it's got a, a decent amount of stuff for for uh the, the $20. Um I, I was a little disappointed that it didn't have a full rule book. It's just kind of the quick rules to yeah. to get you going, but you know, that's for the price point, like that's that's not bad at all. Yeah. Uh, you, get a, you get a Griffin and a Wolverine. Yeah, so it's gonna say. Yeah, I just grabbed mine off the shelf and I'm looking through it right now. I haven't. I got mine luckily at uh, Gen Con, but they, it's mm. been so delayed. They had trouble with their Chinese uh, right. distribution, and they had such a hard time getting it out. So it's nice to see that it's finally coming out, mm-hmm. and uh, people can start. Because Pat, you have the old version, and that's worth its weight in gold because it, a, it had a lot more mechs in it, but. Uh, yeah, it's just six mechs. Yeah, something like that. But mm. uh, even the regular version, I think, only has twelve or fourteen mechs in it. The in the I beginner box has two. The, yeah. the the new the new starter set. I was looking it up online afterwards. Uh, runs about sixty dollars, I think, and it has uh, eight in the full core yeah. rule book, and and I imagine some some other things. So a lot of people are saying that's kind of the better deal, but you well, know, get to, into to it though. Get into it. Yeah, yeah. this twenty this bucks. Is, you can't. Uh, just for the maps solid. and stuff, it's it's worth it. Oh, and you yeah. get two mechs. Like those mechs, if you buy the metal versions, they're going to be 10 bucks each anyway. So, Right, right. So and it, I, they're exclusive, I think. They're, in the beginner box, they're exclusive sculpts, too. They're not the same sculpts that are gonna, in the other box. Oh, sweet. I, at least one of them is. I'm not sure if the other one is, but I think the Griffin is an exclusive sculpt. So, it's yeah, it's it's a good set to start with. Yeah. So, that, that's, that was pretty exciting. A um, couple of things I... So I'm gonna be learning how to play that a little bit. I got a couple other friends in the area that, uh, in my my tabletop gaming groups that uh, enjoy BattleTech as well. Um, and so we're gonna probably get together with them, do a little BattleTech, probably get some cab in, a uh, little bit of everything. And uh, yeah, uh, on top of that, uh, I think I had mentioned uh, in our last episode, but I can confirm now that I did. I uh, wind up spending some of that extra Christmas money uh, to to get myself the full Pat Labor uh, collection. Oh, the, the, yeah, that that DVD set or the Blu-ray set? The Blu-ray set, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it it's pretty. Like I said, if I had a Blu-ray, I, I think I would have bought that. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was uh, that's a really nice. Get. It's it, you know it's the complete collection, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty oh. spectacular. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think uh, some other uh, games that I played. Um, I, I have a Switch, and I got, uh, I think it's Into the Breach. Uh, have either of you guys uh, played or seen that game? Into the Breach. 
Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not seen that. It's mm. um, it, it's a little like grid based tactical oh, nice. uh, game. Oh, it's by the guys who make FTL. Yes, yes. How is that? I almost bought. Uh, it. It's it's kind of it's fun. Uh, it, it's you're you're fighting against like uh, alien uh, like bugs. Uh, and they're they're like attacking towns, and so you have yeah, to like you position get, like, yourself. Don't you get like a mech and a and a tank? Yeah, you get uh, three at least in the um, the difficulty I was playing it. You get three mechs. One's kind of a, a big mech warrior kind of stompy bot, uh, and then there's two that are kind of closer to. Uh, one's more of a, a kind of tank tank, and then there's one um, that's kind of like a little spider bot, uh, kind of kind of like the the Ghost in the Shell mm-hmm. mechs with a little mortar. And so you really kind of have to play with, okay, you know, you know what direction the, the bugs are going to be attacking, if they're going to be shooting and whatnot. And so you position yourself to like knock them out of their, their, uh, their cube that they're sitting in or, you know, block and take the shot or or (coughs) obviously kill them if you can. (laughs) Um, it's a bit roguelike, uh, which, is is tough and uh in some cases if if you're unfamiliar roguelikes are the ones where it's like okay you know when you die you start over mm-hmm. in in some respect you usually if you reach a certain checkpoint you get some some of those things carry over um but uh a lot of times it's okay you're you're back to island number 1 fighting yeah. off these bugs um so that it, it, it encourages you to learn the mechanics quickly. <laughs> uh, back when Pat and I were kids, that's all games were like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you, you uh, play, uh, you play Double Dragon. You were start from the beginning if you died. Exactly. <laughs> or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can never beat that swimming level. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some hair pulling games out there. Uh, yeah. I might actually get it then because I, I enjoyed FTL. Yeah, I I, I mean I it. and I still play FTL faster than light. For those who knows, it's a spaceship mm-hmm. combat game, turn based. Mm-hmm. Turn based. It's real time slash turn. You or it's, no, it's real time, but you can pause it to aim and stuff. Yeah, something like that. It's kind been a while yeah. since I played FTL. But that was yeah. It's it's the same kind of thing. Uh, this is turn based in this case, uh, strictly, and um, but it, it's it's. It's fun, and and it's also in a way kind of casual that you can kind of pick it up and play a couple missions, and I think it can it will like save your progress nice. uh, in between things. Uh, so it's not like not like some roguelikes where it's like okay you're playing, and if you stop at any time, uh, <laughs> um, so that's that was fun. Uh, I, I enjoy just kind of picking that up every now and then. I got it on the Switch, uh, so I can even like take that with me to places pretty easily. Um, and uh, let's see, some other things I uh, – oh, um, one uh, honorable mention that has a mech in it, <laughs> um, but kind of kind of a, a different uh, tangent, Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet either. But it is, it is an excellent movie. Yeah. Um, and in a great Spider-Man movie, and they're one of the uh, to to touch a little bit on the the concept is that there are spider people from different universes and timelines, and and you know uh, that have the 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 mantle as it were of the spider person, uh, whether it be man, woman, uh, robot, <laughs> and so one one of the characters is uh, Penny Parker. Uh, who's, uh, I believe she's, I forget if she had any American descent in her, but she was a, a Japanese, uh, character and, and her, she has a robot that, uh, she pilots to be, uh, that shoots webs and stuff. So it's, uh, it's definitely a huge love letter to all Spider-Man continuity. And, uh, so wanted to get that shout out in and, and because it had a mech in it, I could. Uh, <laughs> Um, another big one uh, worth mentioning: the the finale, the final season of Voltron, aired in uh, January here, and I watched that. Uh, just finished it up a couple days ago, 
And I gotta say that that was that was pretty solid. I really liked that show. I'm so far behind. I need to catch yeah, up. Me on too. It. But now that it's done, I'm yeah, done. you can see an end point now. Yeah, I feel yeah, the same I can, way. I can binge. You can budget yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was it was really solid. Uh, um, I know some people. I've heard some people were upset with uh, some of the decisions at the very end. There, some parts of it didn't quite stick the landing, but in, in as uh, on the whole, like in in uh, a lot of the things that all kind of came together at the end, I thought it was a huge success, and uh, definitely wish them them all the best on their future projects. Uh, that was that was an excellent series, and uh, a great like super ro- robots. Uh, it. it it gets kind of Gurren Lagan at the end, where the the scale of it is kind of ginormous. <laughs> well, I just hope they go to the car version next. <laughs> <laughs> the vehicle version? Yeah. I would love that. Yeah, a reboot of that? That'd be awesome. Uh, s- speaking of uh, car versions and stuff, uh, so uh, some, some announcements that have come out... I. Honestly, don't know if it will feature the mechs, but there is a Power Rangers game coming out uh, that that's in the works. I think they've even uh, shown a trailer of it, or at least some some screenshots. Um, and so I, oh, you'd have to you'd, ha- you'd have to have the Zords in it if you were. <laughs> well, it it might be a fighting game. <laughs> oh, like a, so so like small, it might yeah. be Rangers versus each other. Mm. Uh, so they should still mm. have the swords, in my opinion. Uh, oh, yeah, you just do different just scales, scales, yeah. The decline of the multi-bot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Even even the uh, Power Rangers aren't going to combine anymore. No. <laughs> They're all going solo. No, I think that's... Yeah, I could see it... Uh, yeah, Power Rangers, yeah. I could see them just doing, like, people fighting. Mm. And uh, I know... Another, this, I think this should be the, about the last announcement for me. Uh, the, um, the show SSSS Gridman, <laughs> I think also just wrapped up its first season. Uh, I caught the, the first episode of that while I was hanging out with some friends, uh, for, for New Year's, um, where, where we watched, uh, Starship Troopers 5? Five? Five. <laughs> uh, to, to rain in the new year. Uh, so that was fun. But yeah, the SSSS Gridman I might have been missing an S. The, the uh, Gridman. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I think I might have mentioned it last time. It was, uh, there, there was an old show in the 90s, uh, where it like, it, it had like giant kaiju, uh, mech battles inside your computer. Yeah. And so, uh, it's kind of the, the latest evolution of that. I believe it's by Studio Trigger. So the same guys that did, um, you know, a lot of the animation that you see in the, in the modern Evangelion movies, uh, Kill a Kill and, and stuff like that. Um, actually. And, and, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, it was really fun. I, I watched the first episode. I'm gonna continue watching it. There's some interesting things that my friend pointed out is a lot of the characters have some obscure Transformers motifs to them. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and he's gonna, my friend's gonna hate me that I don't remember what they are. Um, but, uh, so like one of the characters has, uh, the, the, like color pattern on her, her outfit of, um, Megatron. No. Like, like <laughs> there, there's distinct motifs and you can pick them out in all these different characters. Like they um, just little little Easter egg, yeah. Like little buttons on their uniforms, or like uh, uh, there's there's a, one character that has uh, something on their sleeve. I know, I think uh, Shockwave, uh, the character that ha- always has like a mask on over their mouth, <laughs> mm-hmm. like like because Shockwave didn't have a mouth. Um, so it, it's it's just. It's kind of fun that, that, uh, it was, and it's some kind of alternate universe Transformers book, like comic book. Oh, that is it's it? Shattered something. Hmm. Uh, where I, I think it was like all the good guys were bad guys and all the bad guys were good guys. Oh, interesting. Feel free to write in the comments below about how wrong I got that entire reference. Yeah. 
Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, Transformer lore that I have no idea. Yes, yes. Um, but it was it was a lot, it was a whole lot of fun. Uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, continue to check that out and get caught up. Uh, like I said, I think the first season of it just finished up. So that's a that's a fun giant robot show for us to watch. Uh, is it family friendly or is it uh, your <laughs> your version of a? <laughs> well, uh, the the episode I watched was uh, fairly tame, um, but it would probably be like a teen audience. Yeah, uh, but just not because uh, it... yeah, not yeah, adult. Yeah, yeah, not 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 like. <laughs> Some of the, not like Darlene <laughs> and the Franks. <laughs> which is by the same animation studio. You see, uh, you've burned us now. We, we have to be yeah. careful of your suggestions. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is fair. I did start <laughs> off with that. So, I will, I will live with that, uh, from this day forward. Um, but yeah, I think that, that should wrap up most of my announcements because I've been talking forever. So. So I did see an announcement that Gundam NT Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Hit the theaters across the U.S. on February 19th. Tickets are on sale now. They're going to be English language dubbed. Oh, oh yeah. sweet. For one night, February 19th. You'll have to go to the Phantom, 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 Phantom events website to see if the, there's a theater. I just looked and there's a one literally right up the road from me, like two miles away. Oh, lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, is uh, NT going to be just a movie, or is it going to be a TV series? Is it just the pilot, or what? It doesn't say in the announcement. Because uh, I thought it was a series, but if it's just a movie, that's it's a, cool. It's an hour and 40 minutes, so. Yeah, but it could be just the pilot kind of thing, but who knows? Yeah, it could be just a... Uh... Well, I think that that was part of their big announcement um, near the end of last year, where they were like, we're going to be doing these big movies mm. of a whole bunch of uh, these different... Um, you know, entries in the, the series, cause they're doing one for even like Reconquista. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, not many people like that series. Um, I like the idea of just doing movies though. I think that's quick hits, get in and out, don't wear, wear out your, uh, welcome with a whole series, and you could do a different stuff. Like you say, you can go back to one that maybe. I mean, that's how they watched the original Gundam. Well, that too, yeah. They've always done mm-hmm. that, I guess, but. Oh yeah. Yeah, interesting. I'll have to see if there's a, right, if there's one playing in The Gundam NT film is part of the new series. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's going to be the pilot then? That makes sense. Yeah, one probably. year after the opening of Laplace's box, <laughs> the events of Unicorn. There you go. So you got to watch Unicorn first. So. Yes. Do that, because it's great. <laughs> so everyone check that out. I mean, if you've never seen Gundam in a big theater. Yeah, that's just, in general, it'd be great to see on the big screen. Yeah, I mean, just it's the fact that it's limited. Uh, it's pretty cool to go check it out. Well, it's they're nice to see saying, that, like, obviously in Japan. going to be behind-the-scenes footage will be included uh, at the end of the movie. That's cool. Like, in Japan, obviously, it's going to get a huge release, but it's nice to see that in the U.S. it's getting some some love, too. Yeah, I mean, there's three theaters in the Chicagoland area by me that are showing Yeah, up. well, that's a big city. I think so. there's three theaters in my entire state showing <laughs> it. <laughs> Well, I don't think there's three theaters in my whole country showing it, so that's good. I'm not sure if they show. I I know people were um that but I, I saw it does posting say U.S. movie theaters, so it yeah. <laughs> so I saw people posting that they have to go across the border to go watch it. So I, I don't think it is going to be. Oh in yeah, yet. it's like all uh, Detroit area. There's like seven theaters so, showing it. Nowhere else. So, <laughs> so, nowhere so else, you, can, you, you have to brave getting shot to go watch this movie. Yeah, <laughs> or drive five hours to my house. Yeah. Yeah, go the other way. <laughs> Which I did this Sunday, so that wasn't too bad. How how long's the drive to Detroit from where you are? Um it's it's like hour oh, and a half, oh, hour forty five, honestly. It's it's actually not too bad. Yeah. Uh it's just I'm not I'm not a big city kind of guy, Ooh. so Yeah. Uh, driving in into that sounds We'll just have to wait till it it's really comes on tracking. on demand somewhere. I'm sure I'm sure someone will pick it up to show it. Yeah. Nova is the closest to where I am. So, oh, go see it if you can, dude. Watching yes. anime in movie theaters is fantastic. And the more popular it is, the more they'll do it. So, show yes. your support. Well, I remember watching. Uh, sorry, not to to cut in. <laughs> my first uh, online review was when a buddy and I 
drove like an hour and a half to see the Erica 7 movie in theaters for a one night showing. Nice. Which is, are you guys familiar with that franchise? I, Erica it sounds, 7? It sounds familiar, but I, I don't yeah. remember. It was, uh, late 2000s, before the 10s. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it was, their, their mechs do like sky surfing. And so it's like a lot of aerial combat with mm-hmm. uh, their giant mechs, and cool. uh, yeah, it's just funny that that was like one of the first anime uh, I remember ever like hearing was going to get a theatrical release. Yeah, and we made sure that we were there, and we loved it when we watched it, and then we watched it again. I was like, man, this actually wasn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like you say, in the theater, everything is better with bigger. All the battles probably seemed epic, and oh yeah. Well, I think that wraps up Comstar. We'll come back with the Mech Behanger with our our main topic, and uh, we'll discuss some uh, model grades. How's that sound? Sounds good. Now entering the Mech Behanger. Oh yeah, welcome to the Mech Behanger. I uh. I wanted to talk about some model grades, mostly Bandai, I guess. That's where they're, that's the, the most famous grading system for Gundams. Yes. And, uh, I did get all my information from a place called japan-cool.co.uk, and it's the Gundam model kit guide. So we'll put the link to the show notes, give them some credit, because that's where I got a lot of my information about the grades from. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll get into it. So, uh, there's a bunch of different grades, obviously, and uh, we're going to go through and discuss the ones we like and ones we can't afford, and uh, <laughs> and maybe we'll have a surprise at the end talking about a certain type of model grade that some of us find offensive. <laughs> <laughs> some of you. Oh, yeah. Well, it, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, personally, the, the, I think the, probably the most popular because it is the the cheaper end is the high grade scale 144th mm-hmm. scale one 144th scale so yeah they're about uh five inches, inches long yeah, yeah. well fo- 12, 12 inches high well they're not 12 inches that's no they're 12 centimeters high five inches tall those guys aren't 12 oh. centimeters they're 12 inches they're not a foot tall that'd be nice <laughs> i wish they were <laughs> no they're yeah they're five about five inches tall those guys and mm-hmm. uh yeah, they're all color molded. Everything there is the the colors are correct. They usually come with either uh, stickers or uh, um, uh, what are they, decals, I guess. The water transfers. Yeah, the water transfers. Which personally, I I never put on. I I have like a drawer full of water transfers because I just I, it's just such a pain in the ass. The only time I ever put them on was my uh, the 08 MS team because I had to get the eights on them. So, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah. so high grades. Personally, this is the one I get. Because of the price point, but uh, what do you guys think of the high grade kits? Uh, I think the high grade kits are a great entry model kit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if just starting in the Gundam or even mech building, I think the high grade kit's the way to go. Yeah, because you're going to get the mold plastic. It's going to be the right colors. You don't have to paint, and they're all snap fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the snap fit. Uh, I hate the snap fit. I always glue them anyways, because I find they're so loose when they're snap fit. Uh, g- people, glue your models. Don't just snap fit them. <laughs> <laughs> but and see, because yeah. they aren't as posable as the real or masters or even the perfects. Yeah. Uh, but they're still pretty they're easier solid, to build. Actually. Yeah, they're, yeah, but they're just easier to build. Because yeah, you're not doing each individual finger and stuff like some of the old, bigger kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely I'm, easier. It's and the newer ones get the newer models too because uh, they've gotten a lot better. I I had some older ones that are that were not as easy as the newer ones. They they definitely yeah, have improved the system over the time. Old high grade kits were not the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I actually only have about uh, I think three high grades put together. Um, <laughs> How many I, do you have in a I pile? Got like, <laughs> I got like five or six <laughs> put together. Um, but uh yeah, I, I I really like them. I got two uh build fighter ones. Uh, I I forget the names of the build fighter mechs. Uh, but then I also have uh the goof uh flight type mm-hmm. from 08 team. Uh 
which is pretty solid. He's sitting up there with a couple of, of just action figure uh, versions of some other Xeon suits that I got. So I, I, I like the 144th. Um, I, I like the, the size of it, too, from a, a uh, showcase perspective, as it were. If, if, if you're, you know, just kind of want to ha- have them in, in a space, you don't they don't take up a whole lot of room. Yeah. Um, I guess is what I'm, I'm mostly saying. So you can have a, a few of them kind of on display, um, like on the top of a bookshelf or something like that. Or, or a whole, whole shelf full of them. Or a whole <laughs> shelf full of them. Or, or a just, whole cabinet. Or a display cabinet. Yeah. Or a display cabinet. Yeah, they, they uh, yeah, that 144th scale is good. They, the next one we'll talk about is higher, bigger scale, but I do like those ones. You do, you do get a lot for, a, they're cheap. They're, you know, 20 bucks is kind mm. of expensive for one of those. They're usually under $20. So you can get some really nice kits. And if you want to mod them up too, you can have fun because you don't really care that, you know, just rip a head off one and throw it on another one to switch your arms around. That, that's where I got a lot of the parts for uh, the conversions that I've been doing for the dead zone stuff. Yeah. It was just a high grade. I also find there's a lot left over. Like I have so many guns mm. and arms and hands and, like there's so much extra stuff. If you do want to f- mo- uh, model some other things out of it, you do get a lot of extra fun stuff. No, those are I like that personally. That's my uh, range, just because that's the one I get for my uh, Gundam loot, and uh, so mm. I, I end up getting at least one a month, and it is filling up pretty quickly. I don't know how much longer I can sustain this, <laughs> but <laughs> I, that's why I got it. That's why I have. To, that's why I go uh, month to month. I don't. I, I take breaks because yeah. or I'd be swimming in Gundam models. See, I, I always build them. I just uh, so I don't have any packed up, but I do have a pile of them just on my shelf. I have to get like multiple <laughs> levels now to try to so you can see the ones in the back. But uh, yeah, there's, that's a like you say, that's a good starter kit. And if you you just like the scale and you like just to have lots of them, this is also good good size if you want to play that uh, game that uh, some, mm. somebody invented that uses these. Once again, yeah. doesn't matter if you bust them up. Or you can you can even rip arms off because they're just pegged in. So if you do get yeah. damage and stuff, you can show it on the mech. It's kind of fun that way. And it's because they're cheaper, you can have more of them yeah. to to play that game. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the next level up is the master grade. It's one one hundred scale. So these guys are a bit bigger. They're seven and a half inches tall. Lots of lots of uh, detail and. Uh, Usually have things like uh, extra panels and hatches and inner detail, and uh, some have uh, finger joints. Not maybe not all of them, but quite a few of them have the finger joints. I do have one of these. I have uh, I think it's one of the first ones I bought. I, I didn't know anything about grades at the time, and I bought a uh, Zaku. It's a Zaku with a big gun, and he's huge. Like compared to the rest of them, like you don't know the difference between one one forty four to one one hundred. That's a big difference in size. <laughs> It is nearly yeah. twice the height. Like it's 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 amazing the difference. And I remember doing that kit. And like I say, that was one of the first kits I did. So I didn't realize how complex it was. I was like, oh, they must all be like this. And then after doing all the uh, HG kits, I'm just like, oh, this is this is much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, is this the ones you were getting, or are you getting a different scale? I do real grade. Yeah. So this is the one. Uh, do you have any master grade ones? Uh, I have some old master grade ones. Yeah. Uh, because the real grade basically took over the master grade. Yeah, we'll get to the real grade because it, it, that's an interesting mm-hmm. scale right there. But uh, <laughs> I do like the size of the master grade. But once again, like Brian said before, that size is it's starting to get hard to – like he he's so big that I can't stand him up on my shelf. He's down on one knee because my mm-hmm. shelf isn't tall <laughs> enough to actually stand yeah, him up. Yeah, they get to be pretty big. You know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like tall, taller than like most book spines and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's quite tall. For, for those for those that don't have a uh, you know a good reference, yeah, like your your typical paperback book uh, height is probably your your high grade, and so you know start getting into taller, thinner books maybe like a textbook <laughs> <laughs> is is more of a master grade. Uh, I've only got one, and he is not put together yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, that's my uh, EZ8. Oh, nice. That'll be nice in that scale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the thing. This is one of those ones you want maybe get some just for the, your highlight ones, where you just you want one of those, your favorite model, grab one of these mm-hmm. s- to show off, put them in a special spot. Maybe not on the same shelf as the other ones, but uh, yeah, 
That's that's would be a good size for these guys. Once again, a little bit more expensive, but not that much more expensive. I think they run about forty dollars around there. Not mm-hmm. horribly expensive, but you know you can't afford hundreds yeah. of them at that price. You can only afford fifty of them. <laughs> yeah. And, and we didn't uh, we didn't talk much on on high grades, but uh, for you guys with experience on the master grades, do you have to do a bit more painting? On them, or, or how close are they? You don't, uh, usually you don't ones? have to. No, they're still molded in the same colors. Uh, pretty much all the grades are molded in the same colors. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. it's it's the Bandai thing is they always do the colored plastic. Uh, but, the older ones didn't. I have an older. I had an older uh, Zaku. I think it was Char's uh, Zaku that was just the, there was like one color, two, two like two colors, and they were wrong colors, and I had to paint him. But nowadays, I think that they, they almost all of them are the correct colors. You don't really have to paint them. And you add your decals or whatever. I know Pat likes to paint all his... He, he primes and paints all of them anyways, but... Because you're a madman. Yeah. <laughs> a madman. <laughs> I'm too much the hobbyist, and it's my own, it's my own downfall. What was it? Yeah, I, we'll get to the yeah. The real crate is next, so we'll we'll talk about this because this is Pat's uh, jam right here. They're the same size as the high grade, which is interesting, but they're just much more detailed, articulated. They usually have inner frames. Yes, that you can take armor on and off, so you can show the inside of the robots if you wanted to. Yeah, uh, I personally don't. <laughs> no, yeah, I I've had a few where. Even the, some of the HD ones, you can show the inside on them and stuff. I'm like, nah, I just like them how they are. But the real greats, yeah, for the, these are a little bit more expensive once again, but they're, uh, they do have the same scale as the other ones, so they do fit in, but they look so much better. Yeah, they're one, 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 one forty fourth scale. Yeah, once again. It's the high grades. Whereas the master grades are one one hundredth. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, you, uh, is your, uh, your big Xeon guy, is he a real grade? Yeah, he's a real great. So he was quite large because he's a larger. Yeah. Uh, and Brian got to see him for the first time. Yes. In his life. It, it was most impressive. It and was, it was ginormous. beautiful. It's beautiful. It was giving us the thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> I've never... I posed it because it is in, it's basically you can, uh, because of the, of the way real great it is, it's, uh, a little more articulate. Uh, the Xeong has uh, articulated fingers, so you can yeah. pose the hand in your way. And I give everyone a thumbs up, so when they come into my basement, you have a Xeong going, <laughs> thumbs up. I remember when I you were building it. him, you are like, uh, yeah, I was building for quite a while. I realized I was building a finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just following the instructions, you know, because, you know, with these Japanese kits, it's mostly in Japanese, and you just kind of follow the pictures. And I can't, I couldn't tell what I was building, and then I was like, what is this? <laughs> and then I realized when I had built like six, I was building. Oh, I'm building with fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's pretty cool. And uh, you like these ones just because they are the more detailed versions. Yeah, they. I, I feel like they are just uh, they're just a little bit more detailed, a little more advanced uh, than the high grade kits, which is what I like. You know, I like the the articulation, I like be able to. Fully maneuver them. I like the, like we go we keep going back to fingers. You know, I, I laughed when I was making articulated fingers for the Xeon. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, even with the, we'll go away a little bit because I think because Bandai uses this for all their models. Even their real, I use their real grade kits for their their Star Wars kits because mm. they're just uh, they're just the the details just a little bit better. Uh, you're gonna get a. I think when you're done, if you're a good, if you're a hobbyist, then you're gonna get the detail you like. You're gonna be able to paint it up. It's gonna look great when you're done. Yeah, you have to. It's a lot more like detail work, like you say. So it's a lot yeah. more difficult to actually assemble them. There's a lot and the, little pieces going together, and yeah, and just like they say, you don't need any paint. To, but you know, I'm I'm a madman, and I <laughs> I I tend to paint my all mine. Well, especially I them them. yeah. When you get into real grades, you you do want them to look not just like plastic. You want to look a little bit nicer. In. Yeah, and then you know, Brian, like I said, Brian saw it how I shaded mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got I started adding the battle damage to it uh, and things like that. So uh, from the from the MIG books, you know, there are a lot of techniques in there that are great and easy to do. Yeah. It's a- uh, just uh, yeah, it's just that little bit of hey, this is what you do, and all of a sudden it looks great. Yeah, 
Um, and then with the the Vallejo Mecca colors, it's so much easier to even then paint your your Gundam models because they have a specific palette made for mechs. Yeah. Uh, and if you're curious about that, I linked, I put the file in the file section of the Facebook page on Matt Mobile Arm Radio. It's got the, the Vallejo color scale so you can look up the robot. It'll tell you the paints you exactly need for that kit. Yeah, that's cool. And it has quite a few kits in there too. Yeah, and it's it, and let me let me be clear though that's all for Gundam. Yes. Uh, the, so if you're using another kit, like I, w- I have a Bushmaster that I'm thinking about putting together. Uh, so I, I have to eye that. Yeah. You... <laughs> With the color chart and what paints I need to 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 paint for those. Yeah. And even Gundams, they have a certain color scheme, but you look at those animes, and half the time the colors change in the show. So I don't. You know, they they chose what they thought were the closest, but it's not hard. Yeah, well, I mean, here. if you look at something, there there's three or four different Gundams in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Depending on, depending on the variant you got there, like there's so uh, there are two different goofs, so I had to decide which goof I was gonna paint. Yeah, probably from two yeah two, two different appearances, slightly yeah. different colors. So, uh, but I think for a modelist slash hobbyist. I think real grade is is a nice is a nice medium. Well, yeah. Well, it's, I think it's not even a medium. I think that's the pinnacle. Unless you're a, a madman, more madman than you, like someone who has a lot of money. <laughs> because uh, the next kid up, the 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 pinnacle of the uh, the uh, grades is the perfect grade, one sixtieth scale. So they're about foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> and they're hundreds of dollars for these kits. They're yeah. I remember seeing in the box. I, I think the I was at a hobby store in New York City with a coach and uh, the guys in uh, when I was visiting, and they t- took me to the messy hobby store. It's called. And Pat, you were there too, actually. Yeah. And that place is just falling over with models. But there was kits these these perfect grade kits, and they were hundreds, couple hundred dollars, even more. Some were like up to like four hundred dollars, and they were like three feet tall. The boxes for them, like it was crazy, yeah. like yeah. hundreds of pieces. The cheapest Gundam perfect grade kit I've seen is $120. Yeah. And yeah, it's got everything. It's got, oh, usually you have to build the whole skeleton first and then like put everything onto it. Like it's a whole thing where you can decide to how far you want to go. You can show them half done and battle damage and, and once again, you don't have to paint them, but I think if you're getting a perfect grade kit and you don't paint it, I'd be, that's, I think you're missing out on something. That <laughs> Usually when you're at that level, yeah, yeah you're, you're already planning to paint it yeah. no matter what. Yeah, and, and then the perfect grade definitely is for an advanced modeler. Oh, yeah. Uh, I feel like I could do a perfect grade. Uh, yeah, we, I we're, we're so used to building miniatures that mm-hmm. the small bits, that, that wouldn't be daunting. But I think if you're not a miniature builder... That might be hard. Just think that every knuckle, every everything on a finger, everything, everything is articulated, and that's <laughs> just the detail that you'd have to be going through. I think for an average person, you'd have to have built quite a few models before then. Yeah, and they are spectacular models, man. Like, uh, there's a what's the the Gundam that looks like an angel? Oh yeah, uh, the yeah. the wing the wing, wing Gundam. Gundam. Yeah, yeah. That's a great looking, perfect grade kit. Oh yeah, it's got like, yeah, it's huge that thing. Yeah, that's that one. I almost I looked at that one and it was three hundred dollars. It's yeah. normally two hundred two ninety nine. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I I don't I never see these on sale either. That's another thing. The perfect grade you oh, can yeah. find like HG and RGs on sale, but those things that they probably only make us a certain amount because they know that they're not selling those in bulk. <laughs> they know. Yeah. <laughs> It's not to tangent too much from the modeling side, but just kind of a fun tidbit for those uh, that play the Gundam Breaker series, which is basically like the the build fighters, but in a video game form. Uh, it's always fun when you, you like because you 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 have you you know you you assemble your own custom mech with parts mm. from kits. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you do start with like high grade kits. And mass, you know, it goes up to mass grade and perfect grade and everything like that. And the scale goes up in the video game. So, like, when yeah, you fight right. a perfect game or a perfect grade mech, it is literally like <laughs> five times taller than you. It's just a giant on the stage. That's pretty uh, funny. So 
Yeah, it's it's just uh really really shows that scale off for sure. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and then uh, the perfect grade model kits are also the ones that you see from the guys who are really into modeling that do the lighting. Yeah, lighting kits, lighting. It's the perfect grade. So usually have yeah. all the lighting kits to it. Yeah, that's that's not unusual to have a whole lighting kit. Usually they have them built that you can just buy it and put it into them, like specifically. That uh, people, uh, it's usually third party companies, I think, that are doing those lighting kits, but they do them specifically for certain perfect grade kits, and it just fits in perfectly, so you don't have to worry about it. And that's crazy stuff. That that's that's the next level. You have to. I've be, seen some things on. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say you have to be really uh, dedicated to start doing that stuff. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, so we, we talk about perfect grade, and again, I don't want to uh, take away from the Gundam stuff, but even the perfect grade Millennium Falcon is 400 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that thing is so detailed, it's ridiculous. Just looking at the cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> and I want one. <laughs> I, I will have one. I will. <laughs> Would that be the right scale? I, I I noticed you had some Tie Fighters and, and an X-wing there. Yes. Uh, it would, would that be, be the would, right scale? It is because it's 172. The 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 Star Wars uh, Bandai kits that I'm building are one 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 seventy second. Nice scale and the perfect grade Millennium Falcon is one seventy second. Is uh one seventy second twenty eight millimeter? Is that what it is? It's somewhere close, isn't it? Is no, it? it's it's smaller. Is it smaller? Yeah. Right? Maybe that's fifteen millimeter then. Uh, yeah, those those are pretty cool. Uh, they also Bandai also like I said before had uh, other kits in the eighties that were all different scales. One two twenty scale. I have a uh, I think it's a one two twenty scale uh, G fighter. That uh, I just wanted a G fighter, and that was the only one that was available, and it was super cheap. So it's a totally different scale, and uh, they do do all different scales in these old models, and they don't fit in with the new ones very well. No. And they're usually just one or two colors and need lots of glue. And, uh, the panels are just like flush pieces. There's no like pegs to put them in. Like that kit was crazy trying to get it to, uh, fit together. So these older kits, I would, I would avoid that unless you want some nostalgia or you want to have a little bit of a fun thing or you get it really cheap. Uh, I would avoid anything that's too old from Bandai. You could tell by their, their, uh, art on the cover. Those ones definitely look a lot older. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that brings us to the last uh, type of uh, scale, and this is where it gets a little contentious. There's the <laughs> the SD Gundam models. Uh, super deformed is what it's uh, sort of it's known by, but it's not what it actually means. Mm-hmm. What's it? It means something else. Something defender. Something. I can't remember what it actually means. But they're uh, they're not any scale particularly, but they. They're different proportioned. They're chibi proportion, really big heads, big, big eyes. Heads. It's uh, I don't know. I wonder where that started. That whole chibi scale. I, mean, I guess it's just been around forever. I remember I samurai pizza cats from the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's it's probably just they picked up uh, you know, it's old, old like uh, comics when they did like comedy bits. Yeah, always had yeah, like right. the head just giant. Yeah, yeah. and so I I wonder if I'm. I'm probably fairly positive that that's probably like the in, the main driving influence, and they just yeah, that extrapolated sense. that into a well, let's do it for robots too. Yeah, that makes sense. That it's a some it's a manga uh, like trope that they used to do back in the day, and now they just use it like we would do other things. I, I wonder too in um in the the again not not to tangent too much, but some of the early video games uh for like Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom and stuff like that, they had a like a tactics game that was SD, and I mm. wonder if it was just uh, the easiest way to show, like, okay, this is this mech by showing its giant head, yeah, <laughs> and not having as as much detail on like the limbs and stuff. Well, I'm even thinking back to like Fantasy Star and all those old RP- mm. Japanese RPGs. They always had that proportion. The chibi style is. I think yeah. it's older than the the Mex SD Mex. I think it came first from probably from that. Uh, like you say, it was hey, we have to make these characters stand out. They're gonna have like even uh, what is it? Those me the uh, we guys meeples. Oh yeah, the the the, the MIIs. Yeah, yeah, the me's. They're, they're kind of like the same idea, just big heads. Because that's that's the important part is the head, right? So maybe yep. it's just identifying. But anyways, yeah, 
Subert form kits, they very easy to put together usually. It's mm-hmm. great for children, I would say. And usually kids are the ones who like the look of them. And but, adults too. Well, yeah, but it's limited <laughs> articulation. They usually need mm-hmm. painting. I wouldn't say all the time, but they they sometimes need painting. But they Yeah, I feel like they come in less colored molds than Yeah, the ones yeah, I have though. You... I I have a couple of them and they they're fine, but I've yeah. never opened any of the ones I've gotten. <laughs> Usually you um they have stickers for yeah. different colors uh That's right. that go on a, a base. So like a lot of the highlight colors will be just a sticker that you put on. Yeah, that's right. It's, yeah, you could paint it on or you have a sticker. Uh, it's the aesthetic, I guess, that people have an issue with. I know Pat thinks they're an <laughs> abomination. I kind of, I, I I think there's things worse than SD models, and but Chibi in general, that whole Chibi look, I've never mm. been into. Like, uh, what is that? Uh, Super Dungeon Explorer and those kind of games with the, uh, I think it's Super yeah, Dungeon Explorer. Yeah, with the Chibi yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, I've never been into that. I remember at AdeptCon, I think it was last year, we were looking at the uh, painting competition. <laughs> and uh, we're looking through them, all amazing paint jobs. And then there's a chibi section. So uh, my friend Jack, he looks at the chibi section. He goes, I guess they'll give anyone a uh, a, uh, <laughs> a uh, place, uh, like, you know, a uh, category. Meanwhile, the girl right next to her, was, she was just like, talking to somebody else. She's like, oh, that's the one I painted. And Jack's like, oh. <laughs> But it's just the style. Like, I, mm. it, that, that does seem to appeal more to children and and mm. women. But it's also it's it's fun. It's fun style. And I know uh, yeah, I, I have nothing good to say about it. <laughs> I I dig them uh, quite a bit. I've got I've got more uh, SDs than I have of of high grade. <laughs> uh, put especially put together in part because they're a lot easier. Oh yeah, they're, together. they they're usually uh, like two or three parts. <laughs> oh yeah, and they're they're also like super cheap. You can get yeah. them below ten dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's because no one wants them, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, they is the cheapy they, thing. Is that did that come from manga? Yeah, that's what we think. Yeah, it, we we think it does. Um, Weren't that, you listening, uh, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Like, like a lot of times in, in like old anime as well, like if they had the characters um, like shouting or something, like really wanted to ex- do like facial, like strong emotional expressions with faces, they would just have the face, you know, pop up really huge. And, uh, right. and I think that's just kind of been a natural evolution of that. It, you know, it means that they can put more effort into the face of a character as opposed to, you know, their whole body. Even in uh, Sailor Moon and things like that, TV, like to mm. anime, like North American anime that we got, had that kind of stuff going on too. So that's it is a tradition, obviously in Japan. Who knows where it started? I actually, you know what? Astro Boy is pretty chibi when you yeah, look at him. I was gonna say like Astro Boy, um, like Ranma one half, like yeah, uh, it's 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 fun. I like the other thing too is like there's there's different levels of the chibi style as well. Like they're like I, I'm looking over, I and I forget the different names of them. Uh, the, the, they mostly just kind of go under like this SD brand. Yeah, there's lots uh, of different I've, types. Yeah. Yeah, I've got some that are literally like just a torso with feet that plug into the bottom <laughs> and arms that just plug into the side and they can rotate, you know, uh, vertically. And then I've got uh, a couple here uh, that are a bit newer. Um, in fact, from like the Build Fighters Try line, I've got two suits from that, and uh, and they actually have articulation in their elbows mm. and shoulders, and uh, and and some in their their legs as well. So um, there, there's there's it does actually kind of run a range, and it it does serve kind of as a as that good step up. I mean, you're you're probably talking with those straight like the the smallest uh, SDs. You know, that's probably, I think it's eight and up. Like, yeah. can, uh, they're, they're kind of made for and. Well, so you even, a, we even know, uh, we have a friend who has a son who's doing them. Mm-hmm. He, he I seems to gave, enjoy I just gave, I just gave him two. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him a, a Chibi Zaku and a Chibi Gundam 78. Yep. Rick and, yeah. uh, Levi there. Yep. yep. Yeah. And he, and he just, I mean, he just finished he, his first, loves, uh, high grade. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, one thing, going back to real grade and perfect grade, uh, with the detail, what I think is, what I like about real grade and perfect grade is that you'll always have a pilot that you can see. 
Mm. Oh, do they actually? Yeah. Like in the Xeon, you can lift the, the chest plate up and you can see Char. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Or you can, yeah. you can make them to fit SD models inside of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I can use my real, perfect, my real grade to step on the SDs. <laughs> But uh, but I, I like the 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 uh, SD ones uh, also in part for uh, the the scale of them really helps for me doing kit bashing on my mm-hmm. dead zone stuff uh, like for instance I had a, a goof that uh, I stole the shield from and yep. uh, and some of the shoulder pads for those spikes to to make a, a uh, yeah. goof custom uh, strider. Uh, that turned out pretty pretty yeah, neat. They are pretty much the same size as the Strider, same height, like pretty much, yeah, yeah. just about. So that's that, that a is a good more point. Wide. And like, it's, yeah, well, obviously the proportions are different, but the yeah. the weapons and stuff would actually work pretty well for uh, Striders, because mm-hmm. usually the weapons aren't really deformed; they're just a different scale, like you know. But yeah, it's yeah, they they have their place, and I understand Pat. Hates the look of them. <laughs> yeah. But Pat hates everything. We know that. That's negative. And, and, and I'll throw another thing in there about, you know, the, the, the physical size of them make, means that you can have a bunch of them. <laughs> it is super collectible. And not take up a too, too much space. I think the ones all I have too have the same base where you have like a puzzle base where you can put them all together to lock together. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, you've got like a, the bear guy stuff, right? Oh, those guys too. The Harus and the, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, there's a there's a whole other world out there. I don't even know what scale they would be because I don't think they, they're not scaled to anything. They're they're just random. Probably not. Yes. Yeah, Pat. What do you hate more? Do you hate the bear guy who says I am a Gundam, or do you hate Harus, or do you hate uh, SDs? Which do you hate more? Oh, <laughs> it's like a Sophie's choice. <laughs> it is. I think I hate the SDs more. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it in, it encompasses a whole brand of just chibi stuff like really? Super Dungeon Explorer. Yeah, you know, and at least the Haru. I, you know, I only hate Haru mainly because he was annoying in Gundam, yeah. the series itself, almost as annoying as the the girl was for a while. <laughs> well, I think mostly she was annoying because of her voice. Yes, but uh, and her inappropriate showering with the kids. Well, yes, there is that. I, w- I was stunned when that happened. <laughs> it's like, these Japanese kids, they can watch anything. Uh, but yeah, I would yeah. say the, the, the SDs, I hate the worst. Wow. I would never have guessed that. What were you saying, Brian? Uh, I was just, uh, I just kind of had the, the fun thought of, uh, in Build Fighters Try, um, what one of the characters has an SD Gundam that can transform into a, an high grade Gundam, uh, which is kind of fun. But but I also it also spurred the thought is like with the bear guy like grades and stuff is like wait are those like one to one hundredth scale since those came from a show that was about scale models mm. and they would be the actual size of the scale model that they're representing. That's true. They probably are to scale. You're right. The one to one scale. Because <laughs> yeah, they are. They're in a show where the the show is all about playing with gunpla. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's some weird Inception stuff going on there. If you look at it that way, all the uh, miniatures are just scale. They're one to one scale. Right. To that right. show. <laughs> we should just get rid of all these different scales. That's it's, right. Everything's one to one now. Mm. It's just they're different heights. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we blow up pl- uh, Pat's brain, I think we can uh, <laughs> we can get out of this mech hanger. We'll go to the X Phil. How's that sound? Yeah. Well, I mean, let's recap here. So you're oh, okay. you're a high grade guy. I am a high grade guy because I'm cheap. Yes. And then Brian, you were an SD guy. Uh, SD, mostly SD, but I do enjoy high grades. And then I'm the I'm the real grade guy. Yeah, you're real grade. I I'm would be a, if I I'm was a millionaire, guy. I would be a perfect grade guy. But oh, are you kidding me? If I could, if I didn't if I didn't have to work, even just build models, I would definitely be a a perfect grade. If I didn't keep buying other things like transformers and stuff, I would be a master grade actually because I do like that size. It is a nice size. And the one master grade I have is I liked him a lot. He is very cool. I find his uh hips and stuff are a bit loose now after years of sitting there. But I made him so long ago, I don't remember if I glued him. I might have just snapped him. So that's probably why he's so loose. But I do like the scale of those guys. But but in reality, I am a high grade guy. Okay. <laughs> So there you go. Please 
post below in the uh, forums or or. Well, mostly in the, uh, I don't know what I call it, forum, but at the uh, Facebook, Facebook page. The, yep. The group. The group. Post there. Tell us what your great size is and if you, maybe you have everything. And yeah, and let us know how you feel about chibis. Yes. And share pictures of, of the do. mechs that you've got. Yep, please do. We love to see them. And we're back for the X-Fill. Let's X-Fill out of here. And now we've come to the end of the show. It's been fun. It is It is the dead of winter. We're all from the north of either... Uh, I'm in Canada, which is the north of everywhere. But these guys are <laughs> from the north of the uh, United States, so we're all freezing our butts off. Yep. So might as well stay in and be- build some some models. And, yep. <laughs> and uh, pick your models. grade. Pick your, uh, uh, put your perfect, uh, your real grade models together. Or take the whole winter and put your perfect grade model together. It's true. Or put together a legion of yeah. SD. <laughs> it's true. Uh, and then take a BB gun and shoot them all. <laughs> hey, for the price, you probably could. It's true. Uh, you, could use, you could use your SD grades as nerf target practice. <laughs> well, you could probably use any grade for that. Nerf's pretty soft. You're not going to break it. Well, no, you're going to be knocking them off the shelf. BBs, though. BBs, that would, that would actually do some damage. Uh, if anybody has any pictures, like we were saying before, you can, uh, post them on our group, Mobile Armor Radio, on Facebook. And, uh, we do have, that uh, we just started a Discord channel. The link will be in the, uh, show notes. Or you can go to Discord and search for Mobile Armor Radio. And, uh, mm-hmm. post pictures there too, and get into discussion. It's, we discuss things, and it's real-time discussion, which is fun. And it's like a little chat room. And also, uh, the Twitter, I actually wrote it down this time, it is M Armor Radio. So you can go to Twitter and find us at M Armor Radio. Uh, is there anything else I'm missing, people? No. I don't no. think so. I think we're all set. We do like to see your pictures, and uh, any news you have, please put in the uh, the thing. We like checking those out. I like just sharing stuff I find in all the different groups I'm in. I just repost it onto our page to try to get it all together, so I remember mm-hmm. about them. There's always more stuff, like... There's uh, lots of news coming out all the time about uh, different mech stuff, so yeah. we'll try to hit the highlights here when there's actual news. So I'll be posting <laughs> pics of my stuff here soon after after March. Yes, yes. Once the depth comes over, I think we'll all be able to uh, focus more on that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure next month I'll be posting the uh, mech zone rules in the book in there too. So if you even if you don't play a uh, dead zone, you can just use the rules to. Uh, play with any miniatures really should work fine yeah. there you go i think that covers it right that's right yeah i did been, it yeah we did it i've been rob i've been brian uh, i've been chopper and this is mobile armor radio we'll see you in march oh bye 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 aren't you guys gonna wrap your way out of here no Oh, he, I've he, lost. I've lost all the the, the SD talk. Really took yeah. it. <laughs> Knocked the window to your sails. Took, it took all the joy out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Pat might not be with us next month. He'll he'll have uh, buried himself under SD Gundams to kill uh, himself. That's just SD withdrawal. That's all that is. <laughs> <It's> not <laughs> denial. <laughs> this has been Mobile Armor Radio. Join our Facebook group by searching for Mobile Armor Radio. Find us on Twitter at M Armor Radio. Find us on iTunes and visit our website, mobilearmorradio.podbean.com. Join us on the first of every month for more mecha discussion.